In case you're someone who doesn't watch the NBA at all until after the Super Bowl every year, let me tell you a little bit about the Eastern Conference right now. James Harden has just been traded to the Philadelphia 76ers to be paired with Joel Embiid for Ben Simmons, who is now a Brooklyn Net. The Chicago Bulls started the season on an incredible hot streak, DeMar DeRozan is a legitimate MVP candidate, and they had the first seed in the conference until a few weeks ago when they started to get murdered by injuries. And the Miami Heat have now grabbed the first seed, despite the fact that they have not been healthy for any consistent stretch of time this entire season. You might think that the East is wide open, and I do not blame you one bit. If you ask a group of five people who is the best team in the East, there is a very good chance you will get five different answers. Nobody really knows how the NBA Finals are going to look. You can predict pretty much one or two teams from the West in the Warriors and Suns, but in the East, it's pretty difficult to narrow it down beyond the top five, even if you're someone like me who happens to be much lower on one of those teams, <coughs> the Bulls, than most people are. So you're probably here right now to ask, Mike, who do you think is going to make it out the Eastern Conference? Who do you think should be the favorite in the East to make the NBA Finals? And why wouldn't you ask me? I mean, I am something of a basketball genius after all, not to brag or anything, but... As much as I would love to say that the Philadelphia 76ers, who now, once again, have the best duo in the league with James Harden and Joel Embiid, should be seen as the favorites to make the finals, I just can't do it yet. Maybe two weeks from now, after the All-Star break, James Harden starts playing, and he and Joel Embiid look like a perfect fit, Harden looks like his old self, everyone meshes together well, the Sixers very easily could be the title favorites by the time the playoff starts. But right now, knowing everything we know, I've still got to go with the Milwaukee Bucks, if I'm being totally honest with you. This team won the title last year, and then arguably got better, and yet somehow, literally no one has been talking about the Bucks this season. There's a few reasons why, which we're about to get to, but for my money, I think everyone in the East still has to be looking at this playoff run like we have to get through the Bucks. The Bucks are the team to beat. The Nets have issues that you can come up with. The Sixers have issues you can come up with. The Bulls weren't even in the playoffs last year, and who knows how they're going to hold up. And the Miami Heat have had issues of their own. We really haven't seen their full roster function for any significant length of time this season. But when you look at Milwaukee, the team who won the championship last year, I think they still deserve to be viewed as the best team in the East, and there is some good reason why. Now, the Bucks are only the fifth seed right now, which, granted, only places them two and a half games out of the first seed. The Eastern Conference is a madhouse right now. Nobody has a clue what the playoffs are going to actually look like by the time the regular season ends, because the top six teams in the East are all so freaking close in record. But the Milwaukee Bucks are only 35 and 23 right now, with the number six offense and number 12 defense in the league. But... When you look at this team with all three of their stars healthy, Giannis, Middleton, and Holiday, when those three guys are playing together this season, I believe they have a record of 23-6. and 23-6 and six is a ridiculous winning record, something like 60 games. So it's pretty reasonable to, if you are a Bucks fan or if you've been following this team, still view this as the best team in the Eastern Conference. Now, unfortunately, we have not actually seen these three guys play too many games together. But in the sample size we have, they have been dominant. You have three good to elite defensive players, three good to elite offensive players in this trio, and there are some good role players on this team as well. Bobby Portis has filled in very nicely for Brook Lopez, specifically on the offensive end. He's been a great three-point shooting big man to space the floor for Giannis. Grayson Allen is a little piece of shit, we all know it, but he has nevertheless been an 
integral piece to this team. He plays good defense even when he's not actively trying to hurt other players because once again, he's a little bitch, but he's a good three-point shooter. He does a good job on the offensive end. Pat Connington was doing a very good job as once again another three-point shooting role player for this team, although he did just get hurt, unfortunately, immediately after trading for Dante DiVincenzo. However, he is expected to return by the playoffs, and the Bucks just got Serge Ibaka at the deadline, a good backup big. We don't know how good anymore because of his age and how little he's played for the Clippers, but an ideal Ibaka is a solid backup center with some switchability and just good enough shooting to provide well for the spacing of this team on offense next to Giannis Antetokounmpo. So, this is a really, really good trio with a decent amount of depth and a ton of championship experience considering they literally just won the title with this same core. So why wouldn't the Milwaukee Bucks be the favorites in the East? Well, the biggest thing is health. Pat Connington's hurt, we don't know what Brooke Lopez is going to come back like, and all three of Giannis, Holiday, and Middleton have struggled with some minor injuries throughout the season. Giannis, as we speak, is currently out with an ankle injury, and I gotta be honest with you, I'm hoping he stays out for this Thursday's game against the Sixers because we don't have James Harden, and I really want us to have that first seed. It would be really, really nice. Middleton has had some issues of his own, Drew Holiday has had a couple nagging issues throughout the season, and these guys are all... Well, Middleton, Holiday, uh, Ibaka, Lopez, there's a lot of guys on this team who are over 30 years old. George Hill is another one. A lot of guys who are just at that age where when they start to have little nagging injuries, you wonder if it's just something that's going to keep happening. I trust Giannis to stay healthy once he comes back from this ankle injury, but I don't know if I can trust Drew Holiday to stay healthy throughout the entire playoffs at this point because he just keeps having these little injuries throughout the season. I really don't. On the other hand, though, if this team is healthy, I mean, who the hell is going to score on them? Yes, their interior is a little bit sus, and that is my biggest hope as a Sixers fan and worry as someone who legitimately does like the Bucks. I mean, how do you not like Giannis, even with Grayson Allen on this team? Like, if the Sixers don't win, I'm probably cheering for the Bucks once again. I, I like them. I like Giannis Antetokounmpo. I like to see him do well. But when you face Joel Embiid, you really need a good healthy center. Serge Ibaka is both old and a little too undersized to stop Embiid. Bobby Portis is just not a great defender. And Brooke Lopez, even if he does come back, that dude better be 100% if you expect him to do well enough to stop Joel Embiid. Giannis, for as an amazing of a defender as he is is not a Joel Embiid stopper. He's a little too small. He's not an elite rim protector, at least not as a one-on-one -on -one guy. You need somebody to stop Joel Embiid. The Nets are also a threat. We saw last year they just can't guard Kevin Durant. Now, I don't personally believe that that team is going to be a threat this year with all of the injuries and weird chemistry shit going on, but if KD comes back, if Ben Simmons does fit well on that team, if Kyrie gets his hat out of his ass, they could be a legitimate threat to stop the Bucks too, especially if Drew Holiday is not 100%. You are going to need Holiday's defense to slow down Kyrie Irving for you to win that series. And last but last, not least, the Miami Heat. I'm not even going to talk about the Bulls because I don't see them as a threat to the Bucks whatsoever. They can't do anything to stop Giannis. Drew Holiday is going to play great defense on Levine. Like, I, I just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Bulls fans. I don't see them as real contenders. But the Miami Heat played very, very well against the Bucks a few years ago. They have a revamped roster with a ton of shooting. They don't have a superstar, but Butler, Lowry, and Bam is a very good combination on both ends of the floor, and they could give the Bucks issues as well. So while I do believe this team should be the favorite, calling them the runaway favorite or a team that I would even place my bet on necessarily to make the finals is not something I would do. And once again, we don't know what the seeding is. If the Bucks happen to stay in the fifth seed, they will not have home court advantage in any round of the playoffs. And that's not something you want when you are trying to win a championship. It's pretty damn difficult to win a title when you don't have home court advantage in any series. Ask Hakeem Olajuwon. I think he knows. All right? 
So Milwaukee really needs to get some wins in here. They need to have a healthy roster in order to get some wins. The problem, however, is that for as good as this team has been when they have been healthy, they've also had one of the easiest schedules in the entire NBA. I believe they have like the second or third most difficult remaining schedule, and that is not a good sign for a team who's not currently top four in their conference. I don't know what this team's record is going to look like, but I can't say for sure that they're going to end up being a top four seed, and that could really be the difference maker. This Eastern Conference playoffs, I'm super excited for it. As like a general NBA fan, cannot wait to see how these teams do and what the matchups end up being. And that could be it for the Milwaukee Bucks. I think that some teams are going to be easier for them than others. And if they end up making it to the Eastern Conference Finals and all they had to face were some teams like the Celtics and then maybe the Bulls, I think this could be a relatively easy playoff run for them. But if they are the fifth seed and they have to go in in the first round and play the Cavs and then they play the Heat and then they play the Sixers or the Nets, suddenly their title chances are a hell of a lot more difficult than they would have been otherwise. And I just don't know. I don't know what this team's going to look like at the end. I don't know how healthy they're going to stay. So all I can say right now is that while now, on February 15th, the Milwaukee Bucks are my pick to make the NBA Finals from the Eastern Conference, that could very easily change in a few weeks if this team is still having health issues and all of a sudden James Harden is looking great on the Sixers. I'm just saying. It wouldn't be too difficult to knock them off of that top spot, but I do think they deserve some recognition, and they still deserve to be seen as the team to beat in the East until they actually fall in the playoffs. Looking forward to this playoffs, the 2022 ones, they're going to be amazing. Thank you all for watching.